Hello one and all, and welcome to one of the most heavily requested VHS reviews I am I will ev I will probably ever do. What are we reviewing? Well, I think most of you know, because because a lot of you have requested it. Today we are we are finally doing a VHS review of Teletubbies. This tape is Here Come the Teletubbies. To all of you out there who have been who have been consistently requesting for me to do a Teletubbies VHS review, you have all been patient, and this video is for you. So, if you were a kid growing up in the late 90s, fr from around the late 90s to the early to mid 2000s, Chances are, you, you didn't not watch Teletubbies, if you were between the ages of one and three. I know I certainly watched Teletubbies a lot when I was a kid. Um, so this is the first time I've ever reviewed a VHS that's, um, of a show that's made, that was designed specifically for toddlers. Or all the VHS reviews I've done, of all the shows I've done previously, I feel are shows which can also be enjoyed by adults to a degree. Teletubbies, though, is a different matter, as it's purely, des as it's designed purely for, um, as it was designed purely for toddlers, and even all the shows I, um, I've reviewed previously, I've done VHS reviews of previously, were aimed at older audiences than Teletubbies. So yeah, this, so yeah, Teletubbies is about, um, is about, is a show which I've done the V, which I've done a VHS, which I've now done a VHS review of, that is the, that is the lowest target, the lowest target demographic, I've ever done a VHS review of. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know how, quite how to word that. So, so chances are, if you were a kid, you really, really liked Teletubbies. Well, there were a few ki kids who even who found them creepy. But, but even, um, but, I bet some of you are wondering. Well, if this is a show designed specifically for toddlers, how come it has a teen slash adult following? Well, be patience, please. We will get we will get to the reasons behind that once we start once we start this review. Well, well, pu well, I think the. Well, I think one of the main reasons is how heavily nostalgic it is for some people, because this, for many people, Teletubbies was the very first TV show they ever watched, and it was designed to be kids' very first exposures to, as a show that would be kids' first exposures to TV. However, it also, the countryside setting also just has a very... I, I realized this when I was watching through this VHS yesterday. The countryside setting of Teletubby Land just has a really relaxing, just have just has a really, just has a really has just an unexplainably relaxing vibe to it, and I think that's one of the main reasons why it has Teletubbies has its teen slash adult following. I mean, this is a show that's best enjoyed while on. Um, Let's say alcohol, but um, when you're when you're an adult, of course. But um, but but regardless, I do I can see where this show's adult following comes from. But is there anything else that um, 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 that adults can appreciate about Teletubbies besides its nostalgic value and the countryside setting of Teletubby Land? Well. I will tell you all about that once we get into the review. So here we've got the front cover, we've got all the Teletubbies on the front. Here's the spine, and here's the back. Here's the description. Help coordinate watching with listening. So basically it was designed as a show to be the, to get kids introduced to the idea of TV, basically. So Teletub the copyright for Teletubbies was filed in 1996, but I believe the show began production in 1995. 
despite not coming out until 1997. Oh my, yeah, in three weeks' time, this show's going to be celebrating its 25th anniversary. Christ, we're all old men, aren't we? We're all, we're all, we're all old men and women, aren't we? So, I, I, so this tape was released in 1997, and it has a running time of approximately 62 minutes. All right, guys, sit back, relax, get some snack, get some snacks and a drink if you want. This review is going to be about 70 minutes long. So here's the tape. Here's the back of the tape. And now into the my VHS player you go. Camera onto the tripod. And we shall begin this review. Now, one thing I do have to say is that when I was watching through this review, the picture and the audio quality really weren't great. It was crackling throughout the entire thing. And I hope this isn't going to bug you guys too much. So, yeah, I apologise if this bugs you guys, but... Uh, there's nothing I can do to help it. Hopefully it won't bug you too much, though. Yeah, 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 picture interference. Make sure you guys get a big enough picture. Hang on, make sure it's not too loud. Yeah, 35 will be acceptable. Oh, here we go, it's starting. Oh, bloody hell. No, going completely black like that is and will not be acceptable. <sighs> Yeah, I apologise for this, guys. It will be like this throughout the whole review, and I, and I really do apologise. Can't help it, though, as you know. Right, here's the iconic intro. With the, with the, with the sun baby. I, I only recently realised, when I was watching through this, what the Sun Baby is supposed to represent, but I'll explain that as, as we go on. Oh, oh, the music in this. This whole show, for its target demographic, is... really is surprisingly good. Uh, supr uh, well, well, what I mean by that is it has a, it has a surprisingly high production value. This show has a very surprisingly high production value for its target audience. And I'll explain a bit, and I'll explain more of that as the more about that as the review goes on. Oh, I'm sorry about this, guys. You'll just have to deal with it. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, not that. That I mean. Ah. Oh. oh, that music and that sentence must bring back a lot of memories for you guys. Even for me, this theme song is really, really nostalgic. I think I first watched Teletubbies when I was, like, one in 2005. That's when I first remember watching it. Flickering isn't quite as bad as it as it as it was when I when I watched through this yesterday. It's not as frequent. Oh yeah, the speakers that, in, that inexplicably pop out of the ground. And there's the sun again. 
We'll talk about the sun later on. First things first though, as an aspiring filmmaker, I'd like to talk about this show's production value, because to an aspiring filmmaker ma maker like me, I see this show's production value as, like, really, really high. Like, for, for its target audience, anyway. I mean, the amount of effort and detail put into Teletubby Land itself, for a start. And the Teletubbies themselves... Oh, the narrator. Yes. And the Teletubbies themselves, those co those animatronic costumes which the pe which the actors inside puppeteered with the eyes and mouth, those can't have been cheap to make. The co yeah, the Teletubby costumes can't have been cheap to make. No, no, there's three of them. Congratulations, you can count! <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I had to say that. And, and those telly and the, and the costumes were actually massive compared to the size of the rabbits. So to uh, so for so to keep within scale, all the rabbits were Flemish giants, like like the some of the biggest rabbits in the world. Absolutely massive rabbits. Congratulations, you can count! <laughs> yeah, so as I was saying, the rabbits were absolutely massive in real, in real life, to, you know, to, to keep in scale with the Teletubby costumes. Some of the biggest rabbits in the world, and they've got to, and there had to be at least 50 of them. And there, ha and there had to be at least 50 of them in the production. Buying 50 Flemish giants surely can't have been cheap either. Look at the amount of other oh, sun. Look at the amount of flowers as well. When you think about the level of detail in this show, it really all does add up to the cost. Yes. And now, and the, now, now I believe the sun is supposed to represent the kit. I, I recently realized I only re I only realized this yesterday when I was watching the Tony Cubbies, but I believe the sun is supposed to represent the the kids who are watching. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, the yeah that. The, well, the toddlers who are watching and reacting to the Teletubbies antics, and it's supposed to, like, represent the kids who are watching the show reacting with the sun. To tr yeah, basically trying to get it to get into it. But, yeah. So, yeah, basically... So, it's basically... So, it's basically further emphasising this show's aim to get kids... to introduce kids to TV. La la, la la Nazi confirmed. Yeah, doing 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 that pose is la la a Nazi. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, that you know you know my sense of humor is. You got if you guys know me, my sense of you you know that my sense of humor is quite dark. Now a lot of you must know about that infamous sequence, and it is in this VHS about that infamous sequence of um, of the Tubby Toast machine going wrong and all the pieces of Tubby Toast flying any everywhere. All those individual pieces of Tubby Toast must have cost at least thirty pounds to make. I'd say they they cost at least thirty pounds to make, and and with the amount of Tubby Toast seen in that sequence, it. With the amount of tubby toast seen in that sequence, it all really does add up. And the fact that they also built an entire dome house for the Teletubbies to live in, both inside and out. This wasn't even a set, this was actually inside the actual house that you see in the intro. Building that, building that with all that level of detail, and the windmill as well. So much effort was put into this show's production design and production value. They didn't have to put up, put in this much effort 
for a show aimed at toddlers, but the fact they did goes to show that it goes to show that even entertainment made for the youngest of audiences needs to have standards and effort put into it. And to everyone out and and to, and to all those people watching this video who think I can't be reviewing this show because I'm because I'm not the target audience, you can sod right off. Now this show isn't perfect. See Dips, Dipsy's moving but no sound plays. Yeah. There are a few there are a few dubbing errors in this show. It's not perfect though. Yeah, yeah, it's not perfect and there are a few dubbing errors. <laughs> As good as the practical sets and all the practical effects in this show are, the digital effects also look also look good enough for 1997 standards, I'd say. Oh yeah, now we, now we move on to the sequences where the Teletubbies meet kids in real life. Yeah. Yes. I hope the fact that kids are shown here doesn't doesn't mean I hope doesn't result in copper coming along and um, and marking this video as made for kids. All of the this show was made in I know the show came out in 1997, but all this must have been filmed in 1995 or 1996. So all these kids must be in their all these kids that you're seeing must be in their 30s, in their early 30s by now. Yeah. I mean, filming the live action kids sequences must have been the cheapest part of the production. And if you think about the number of episodes Tally Tubby's had in total, even if it, in its first season, Teletubbies had 365 episodes in total. That is pretty shocking. Made in just, um, made in just, um, made within the span of just five years. That really is shocking. But even so, but even, um, but yeah, even in the first season, the show can't have been cheap. action kid sequences aren't really that exciting and they do and they do grind the rest of the show to a halt to a halt however however I do get the point of them it was in, to introduce the toddler audience to aspects of real life basically it was a show to help get get kids accustomed to both TV and life in general with these live action sequences and TV through the through Teletubby Land. So yeah, despite this show's very young target audience, I do find a lot of value in it, both through its charming countryside setting, which they did actually film in the Gloucestershire countryside, both through its charming both through its charming countryside setting, and I can also appreciate this show, this show's production value as an aspiring filmmaker. It can't have been cheap to make. Yeah, Teletubbies must have cost millions to make. When you think about it, tel Teletubbies, the first season's final production cost must have added up to about, like, two million pounds, I'd say. Can't say for sure, but that's what I think. Oh, usually the live-action sequences are repeated to pad out the, the running time of TV airings, but not in this VHS, thankfully, because it's pointless. Yeah, the digital effects used on the sun are also good. 
Also quite... Also quite... I mean, people do find the sun creepy, but I never did as a kid, and I don't, and I, and I don't find the sun creepy today, so... Yeah, as I said, the digital effect, all the digital effects are, ex are decent by 1997 standards. Oh, 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 the cloud. The cloud left something behind. Oh, look at the rabbits. Oh, Po. <laughs> now there's always a a rant. Um, now there's always with. Telly Dubby's having their favourite things, so and I love how Poe says ride it every time she rides on a scooter. A big puddle. <gasps> and do you know what happened? Oh, hello, here comes Dipsy. Look, you can actually see the Gloucestershire countryside in the background. And the fact that they filmed this out in the open country, I, I feel would r really helped really helped the kids to believe that Teletubby Land was a real place. And technically it was a real place, with it being built in, built in the countryside. And, and Teletubby Land actually remained standing for, um, for 12 years. Um, I, yeah, I believe, um, yeah, I believe Teletubby Land was first built in 1995, just when the show was beginning production. And then I believe it remained standing until 2007, when the farmer who owned the land where Teletubby Land was built took, took it all down because he couldn't stand the, the number of trespassers who were fans of the show as kids. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Puddles aren't that bad, Lala. Yeah, but... down another dubbing mistake. Uh, you're right. How can you not hear them? They're right next to you, Tinky Winky. God's sake. Yeah, it really did help. Yeah, filming it in the countryside was a great decision. And then he jumps in on purpose after warning him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do get the joke there. Now he's dancing in the puddle, he actually likes it, unlike the other three. Oh yeah, the sun laughing, just like the, um, just like the kids are supposed to react to this, like this. Yeah, filming him. Yeah, Teletubby Land technically was a real place, and filming in the countryside did, really did help to reinforce that. And the countryside setting behind the Teletubbies, com coupled with the music, just... It just gives up a strangely relaxing vibe. An unexplainably relaxing vibe. Oh look, it's daytime now. It's sunlight now. It was overcast before, but now it's bright and sunny. The sun. Yeah, this is obvious use of stock footage there. Yeah, this show's production value isn't perfect, but but with the, with the amount of effort they put into building Teletubby Land, into creating Teletubby Land, and and making the Teletubby costumes really does go to show how much the, how much effort these people wanted to put in. Oh, here's oh this is oh yeah magical moments. Yeah, with, these often happen in Teletubby Land as well, in which a, in which an event animated with CGI occurs within Teletubby Land. Now I will admit this CGI doesn't look doesn't look great. This CGI really doesn't look great with, with, with the bending, stretching limbs of those tigers. It really does feel out of place, but for 1997 standards, this CGI is acceptable. 
and I guess these, and I guess it is supposed to look out of place since since this is a magical, this is supposed to be a magical fantasy event that occurs. Oh, those elephants be thick. They be thick boys. <laughs> In all seriousness, those elephants are pretty f are pretty fat. Yeah, most elephants are slimmer than that. Oh. Yeah, CGI doesn't look the best here, but it's acceptable for 1997 standards. Oh, we got some tortoises as well. Behind some giraffes. And some ribbits, some froggy boys. <laughs> some, some ribbit boys. Although, if there is one good thing I can say about the CGI, it's that the shadows, the shadows that reflect off them, do at least look somewhat realistic. And then it fades away because it's a magical event. And now we cut to a totally another part, to a totally different day with all the toes of his back. Yeah, this episode just cuts back and forth. This is, this isn't just an, this isn't an episodic VHS, it's more just cutting back and forth between different skits that were filmed throughout the course of the series. You know, we've got Tinky Winky. A bit like Mr. A bit like Mr. Bean. It isn't really episodic, but it's more just various random skits with a very loose story. Yeah, narratively, this show is 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 closer to Mr. Bean, with it being with it being a collection of skits with only a very loose story. Oh yeah, Tab Tabby Toast in bag. I don't think if you watch this, unless you watch this um this skit, unless you watch this skit, I don't think um I don't think you'd know that Tinky Winky was. That Tinky Winky's back was actually capable of holding things. Oh yeah, Nunu as well, the vacuum cleaner. He can't have been cheap to build either with all his moving parts that that needed and the puppeteers that are, that needed to be puppeteered. Yeah. No, oh, he's off. Yeah, the the dome house was certainly was certainly was not cheap to build. What's Dipsy's hat doing out in the middle of the countryside? Don't, don't these Teletubbies have places to store their favourite things in their, in their dome house? Oh, he put it in his bag. Put it in his bag. Yeah, the... Okay, that's gonna be a bit of a... If you're gonna fit that in there, Tinky Winky, you're gonna have to really stuff it in. And uh, was there any reason for you to, te to for you to steal? I know that's a bit harsh, but I know it's that sounds a bit harsh. But steal Dipsy's hat? Was there any reason for you to do that, Tinky Winky? A little further on, Tinky Winky saw a Lala's ball. Lala's ball. So Tinky Winky put it in his bag. <laughs> what? How the hell is he gonna fit that in his bag? Oh my god. What? <laughs> okay, so it can fit in his bag, apparently. <laughs> Along with Dipsy's hat and the tubby toast. Yay! And now you're, you've stolen Lala's ball. Is there any reason for you to do that, Tinky Winky? Oh no, you're not gonna try and put the scoot post scooter in your bag, are you, Tinky Winky? Surely that's gonna be impossible to fit in your bag. Scooter. Bag. No, no, you. There is no way you, you could. You'll be able to put that in there, Tinky Winky. No way at all. Bag. 
No. That you can't, you won't be able to get it in there, Tinky Winky. There's just no way. See, you're struggling. You can't get it in there. Oh, what? what? Okay, Tinky Winky, we need to have a bit of a talk. What kind of magic sorcery is your bag? There. What magic? Now, Kinky Winky's bag was all full up. <laughs> all full up? It's ba There's no. What kind of magic sorcery is that bag, Tinky Winky? Where did you even get that bag, Tinky Winky? Did Mary Poppins? Did Mary Poppins sell that bag to you? And how did you even pay for that bag? Did you give? Did she? Did you, did you get that bag for her and gave her some tubby toast or tubby custard in return, Tinky Winky? Because if you got it from Mary Poppins, then that would explain why, why things that seemingly wouldn't fit in there would. That's the only logical explanation I can think of, that it has the, that it has the same properties as Mary Poppins' bag. Yeah, you must have gotten that from Mary Poppins. Or, or someone like Mary Poppins, or some sort of magic sorcerer. Either that, or Tinky Winky got that bag from Diagon Alley. <laughs> and how do you not remember what you put in your bag, Tinky Winky? How do you not remember what you put in your bag, Tinky Winky? You literally just put it, put, put it, put your... You literally just put those things in there. How do you not remember? I get that... I get that toddlers don't exactly have the best of memories, and that's what, what Tinky Winky's supposed to represent, but seriously, you only just... You, like, put all those things in there just five minutes ago, five or ten minutes ago, Tinky Winky. How do you not remember? And you just put, and plus you just put La La uh, Poe's scooter in there. So how do you not remember that you put that in there too, as either? Oh, here it comes. He's taking it out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely, a, that is definitely Mer a Mary Poppins type bag. Or he got it from Diagon Alley. <laughs> hat would fit in there if you squeeze it, if you squeeze it tight enough, but not the, but not the ball, or, and certainly not the scooter. Yay! And they found their things. Yeah, it was inevitable that Dipsy, Lara and Poe would go looking for their things. Predictable. Oh, you can see the countryside in the distance again. Still a great aesthetic choice. What can you can you guys name me any other shows or even a fit or even another film or or even another film where um where they built an entire fantasy land completely outside? Okay, may okay, the Lord of the Rings films maybe yeah, okay, the Lord of the Rings films maybe, but but that but that but that had mass had massive budgets and some of the greatest cast and crew of all time. So so the fact that a show for for kids built its set completely outside in the middle of the countryside really does go to show how much the people who were making this show cared. What what, why do they have to obey the narrator? Why can't Tinky Winky and that Tubby Toast now? He's been on a long walk. Why do the Teletubbies feel they, they, ha they have to do exactly what the narrator says? Why can't they just rise up against the narrator like a communist revolution? We will do what we want! Screw you, narrator! I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I just love seeing the Teletubbies. Teletubbies asleep is just unbelievably cute, especially Lala. Lala sleeping is one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my life. I found, I found it somewhat cute even as a kid. Lala definitely sleeps the cutest though. Oh, Poe po falling out, falling out, falling over thick, fall, falling out over things for no reason. <laughs> oh dear. Got a tummy custard. She fell down from the table. I think this is the only time we see the Tally Tubbies having tummy custard in this VHS. We certainly don't see them making tummy custard. Ow! Pulling levers, yeah, all those levers that they have that they fit in, and all those and all those and all those lights and switches and gauges. Building, building, building the dome house definitely must have been the most expensive part of the production. You can clearly tell that whenever the Teletubbies fall over it, the actor it doesn't it doesn't look natural in the slightest. You can clearly you can clearly tell most of the time that the actors are forcefully falling over it. There isn't any natural direction. The directors clearly don't um don't make don't try to make it seem natural. So yeah. This show's directing isn't the best, nor is it is its audio editing, but everything else as I said, really, 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 really surprisingly good for its talking audience. Oh my god, what are the rabbits doing? Why are they around? Why are those rabbits around Tinky Winky's crotch? Tinky Winky was watching the rabbits. More like a line of rabbits to suck him off. <laughs> I am so sorry, guys, that was not necessary. You can clearly tell that Poe's actor just threw the scooter down and then deliberately fell over. Couldn't, couldn't the director have at least attempted to try and make that falling over seem natural? Poe wasn't even going that fast. I mean, if she was going fast, then that would have, then that would have, um, then that would have been acceptable. But couldn't the director have tried to make it seem natural? I mean, it's not like he couldn't when all when everything else in the show is done so well. Clearly, clearly on purpose. Yeah, Lala was yeah you know, coming to help, but then she fell over on purpose. That's so deep. Yes, clearly on purpose. Well, at least the sun's enjoying it, as are the kids, I suppose. Now we're, now we're moving on to another segment. Now this is a series of segments. Oh, hello. Oh, this segment is, um... Hang on, I need to explain something. This segment that you're seeing now... Oh, wait, Tubby Custard does appear again. This segment was actually parodied in an in an SMG4 video called Tubby TV, in which in which it was basically the same plot, but but a bit more but a bit more edgy. <laughs> with with Tiki Winky getting up and, and there's a song playing that goes, just waking up from the late night death match screen still shows the score from my dispatch. <laughs> and then and then he slips on the tubby custard rather than just seeing that the bowl that the bowl was spilled. And then he travels and then he travels across and then Tinky Winky just leaps across the whole line and he even goes through a stargate at one point to find Poe and he to find Poe. And then Tinky Winky demands that Poe clean it up, but Poe screams no. Yeah, if, yeah, I'll I'll if I remember to, I'll leave the link to that um, SMG4 video in this video's description. Oh, spilled over. It's filled. 
One day in Teletubby Land, Tinky Winky saw that somebody had spilled their tubby custard on the floor. It looks mold. That tubby custard looks moldy, so it must have been. So it must have been cubby custard. So it must have been spilled a while ago, a while back before this. Footprints. Who spilled the tubby custard? Who spilled the tubby custard? Pill who pills the tubby custard? Oh. Tinky Winky followed the oh, That lisping is is the telly tubby's lisping quite can be quite funny at times. Where's the rabbit? <laughs> Tinky Winky followed the footprints. Over yeah, mouldy footprints. Oh, but I hate oh, so far away. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the bush, a very, very small bush. Dipsy petting the rabbit, so cute. Where Dipsy was sitting with the rabbit. Dipsy was sitting with the rabbit. When I watched this show as a kid, I I remember the Teletubbies barely. In, I, I remember seeing the rabbits, but I but I remember I barely remember the Teletubbies even interacting with the rabbits. No. Or all them even being regularly, all them even being regularly mentioned. Well, I suppose they were. Evidently from here, from what I'm seeing here. Who pilled the puppy cussed? Dwayne Johnson pilled the puppy cussed. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you guys. Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> for some reason. Can't have been. How dare I be accused of such an unforgivable crime! <laughs> that that's what Lala's gasp was implying. Oh, oh, once again you see the countryside in the distance, once again giving off a, a really weirdly relaxing vibe and how, and how sunny it is here. Yeah, who indeed. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and if and if he's found out, he will terminate you. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that wasn't necessary, guys. <laughs> the rabbits, the Flemish giants. So many rabbits. Speaking of the rabbits, I heard from Steve Reviews' video about one of the sequences from Teletubbies that they'd have that the film crew would sometimes have to do a lot of reshoots and retakes with, when there were scenes with the rabbits, because often the rabbits would be, well, to put it, um, to put it as least. To put it as unvulgar as possible, getting it on. And then they went indoors. Yeah, for some reason they went, the, f the footprints went both in and out. Hang on a minute, were those footprints there when Tinky Winky left? Must have been on their way. 
No, they weren't. On that clearly handheld camera, that. You can see the detail of dirt on the floor. Oh, and there's Poe sleeping in the bed. Poe up and demanding that she clean it up. That she clean it up. She made the mess. And I know this is a show for toddlers, but they but really they should learn that they should clean up after themselves. Well when they're older anyway. Right guys, I've paused it because my camera's running out of battery and we've still got at least another 20 minutes of this review to go. So I'm gonna cut the camera and change the battery and I'll be back with you guys. Alright, I am back guys. Well, the battery's charging now, so let's continue. Oh, hang on, rewind a bit, cause, so you can hear the audio, because the audio doesn't start playing when I as soon as I press play. Oh, oh it's gone, oh, the, oh, it's gone a bit deeper now. The audio's gone a bit deeper now. Yeah, I told you this, um, I told you this, um, I told you this, um, I told you this, 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 this tape's audio quality wasn't the best either. But I, but I know how much you guys have been waiting for this review, so I didn't want to delay it and try and get a new tape. It's not that bad, to be honest, the flickering. And besides, I think the slight, the slightly deeper audio makes it... I don't know, it just, it, the slightly deeper audio just makes it, um, lower audio just makes it... Well, weirdly better, in my opinion. I don't know how, but it just does. Oh yeah, things often do randomly appear in Teletubby Land as well. A watery ham? God, I would not like to eat a watery ham. What even is a watery ham? Oh yeah, the megaphones that often pop out of the ground for no reason. For no really no reason. Megaphones as well. They can't. <sighs> that is the only thing I don't buy about Terry's Heavy Land. How do they? How do they pop out of the ground? And where do they get the power from them? And how? And how do they pop out of the ground? Yeah, you often do get a lot of those these sweeping shots in this show. Oh, oh sorry guys, uh, my chair banged against the Manchester drawers. Um, the yeah, you do get a lot of sweeping shots. Yeah, the, this show's cinematography is also it's also pretty decent, pretty pretty creative. Yeah, pretty yeah. Well, not creative, but still decent enough. Just cuts and the audio just cuts off suddenly. So, yeah, all these sweeping shots. 
sweeping establishing shots. Yeah, pretty common, pretty common cinematography choice of this show. Pretty, pretty stylized. Oh, this is the the tubby toast machine going wrong scene. Uh, so skits that I told you guys about. Teletubbies. They're not actually that fat. The Teletubbies aren't actually that fat. Sort of tubby toast fetish. Oh, mwah, oh, perfect. Yeah, it's perfect mode. No, look, no, he's no tinky winky. Winky tinky. Uh oh, tinky winky was out for a walk. Why did tinky winky say uh oh as if to question, as if it, as if he's questioning something? wrong. It starts to go wrong. Details can't have been all the little details inside them. Um, where's the tummy toast? Yeah, all the little details inside must the made inside can't have been cheap either. Yeah, so as I said, uh, this wasn't even filmed on a set on a green screen, this was actually filmed inside the actual dome that you see outside. I think that's an actual outside view. three of the five lights this time. As I said, this really, really could could not have been a cheap show. This show must have had a higher budget than a, a much higher budget than shows I like than than shows than BBC shows I've previously done VHS reviews of, like Balamori. This the BBC must have been really, really confident in this show to have put so much money into it. Oh, here we go, all the lights are flashing on and off. Oh, something's really going wrong and it's shaking. But it's never explained what goes wrong with a tubby toe, with a tubby toast machine. Oh God, there it goes. So much toast. I'm being showered with toast. I also love how this scene, how the tubby toast going everywhere, there isn't an ounce of CGI used here whatsoever. It's done complete, I love how this scene is done completely with practical effects. No, 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 CG, no CGI whatsoever. You can see this is starting to smoke now. 
He has so much smoke effects. Yeah, all those individual pieces of Tony Toast, as I said, must have cost like 30 pounds each to make. When you see how many pieces of Tony Toaster that are there, it really does all add up. Really would all add up. Further increasing this shows the, the amount of money spent on this toast. Sun's supposed to represent the kids watching. You spinning around like a madman. <laughs> real food if the rabbits are eating it how do they if the tubby toast wasn't real how do they achieve the rabbits not not eat um how do they achieve the top the um the rabbits eating it okay how the hell did they was all that tubby toast cleaned up so far surely they wouldn't have been able to eat it all they must have stored some of it away for later well most of it away for later how come I don't think they would have even been able to eat all that tubby toast off the table. What's going on? There we go, we've got another, um, another guy, kid interaction scene now. Right, I think we've got about... Ten to fifteen minutes of this VHS left. Oh, those 
Oh, oh there's that dubbing error again. All those music notes and that and that sound effect there. Also weirdly re relaxing, especially with a slight, slightly deeper, especially slight, with slightly deeper what, with a slightly deeper audio. Thanks to this show, it's not not great quality. That's all right. Oh, here we go. We've got Tinky Winky, Winky Tinky. Oh, hello, we got a dog here. Oh. Sequences. Um, as I said, they do drag a bit, but it doesn't detract from the from the enjoyment too much. And yes, once again, teens and adults do enjoy Teletubbies as well. To all those people who say we can't because we're not the target audience, as I said earlier in this review, you can sod right off. seems to be rolling all the way off on its own. This part, I, I don't think most of the live action of the real life sequences are scripted, but I think this part of it clearly was. This part of it clearly was. Yeah, this, this, must, have, this must have been a rare moment where where we get a scripted, um, sink, um, real life sequence. Doggy boy. where it's gone. <laughs> Now we move on to the last sequence in this review in this in this VHS. I 
don't think I've, I've talked enough about the music in this review. It really is surprisingly good. You can you can tell that most of the time it's um it's like MIDI synthesized synthy instruments, but um but um but they do also occasionally. You, I can also also tell that they use a random shot of that rabbit. Oh no, it's to show the, the, it blowing. Oh, his hat's gone. The wind tugged at the inspector's hat. <laughs> yeah, line from Thomas Story from Bold Out. Um, yeah, they, but they, but you can also tell when they use proper musical, in proper instruments as well. And when they do, the music is really, really surprisingly good. Uh, yeah, kids clean enjoying it as is the sun. Here we've got Poe. Oh, now she's going fast. See, if Poe had fallen off when she was going that fast, I would have... I know it seemed a bit more natural. I would have bought it more, but the... Yeah, as I said, the direction... The directing in this show really is not the best. But it could have been much, much worse, though. Oh, she has the, she has the hat now. She has Dipsy's hat now. Yeah, oh, oh. You can clearly see that, though. Why did I say that? Cow hat. Hat. Where's my hat? Said Dipsy. Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Demanded the inspector. Like. Which she can't see. Look behind you, Mr. In Mr. Dipsy. Mr. Inspector Dipsy. Ba -ba -da -da -da, Inspector Dipsy. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was not necessary. Oh, she crashed into a tree. Couldn't see. Here's the rabbits. And the rabbit move out of the way. I saw. Off it goes. Roll it. Ro they see me rolling. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Dipsy's hat. Tinky Winky. Winky Tinky. until I watched this VHS yesterday is how much the telly how how much the Teletubbies actually speak compared to how I remember them. I'll, I remember them barely speaking at all. Oh, why on earth did Lala did, did Dipsy kiss Lala? There was there was no He didn't kiss him last time. They didn't kiss he didn't kiss her He didn't kiss He, he didn't kiss her last time <laughs> Demanded the inspector. <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, there's Lana. So yeah, um, why not? Why not do the? Did Lana do that? Yeah. So as I was saying, one other thing I, I didn't realise is just how much the Teletubbies speak. I, I don't, I don't remember the, the Teletubbies knowing as many words as a kid as a. As I do now, but the, clearly they're they're more clearly the Teletubbies are more literate than I thought um, than than I, than I than I thought as a kid. Oh yeah, they found them. Why are you going away from each other? Oh, oh, they're going around the other paths. Hang on, I remember there only being one path as a kid leading that way. I don't remember the other path that went that way. And why are there two? And why isn't that path connected up? that goes in front of the house. Why are those paths, paths connected to each other with another, with a, with a path that goes in front of the house? Right, right, we're very nearly at the end now. Teletubbies love each other very much. Yeah, they clearly do. I think that's the last thing that, that, array, that Teletubbies love each other very much is the very last thing that, array, that narrator always says before, before the end of each episode, or Tubby Bye Bye as it's known. See, it's about to happen with that rising out of the ground. Why do the Teletubbies have to do everything the megaphones and the narrator say? Why can't they just do their own thing all the time? Um, uh, okay, I guess that's supposed to be like getting your kids to listen to their parents. That's that's at least something the, um, the show is subconsciously teaching. 
I'd say. Bye -bye, yeah, and, and the audio is, is yeah, as, as you know, as I keep saying, it's slightly lower pitch than before. Oh, those clouds are so, um... Oh, those clowns are very, um... Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's actually quite an unusual... That, that is actually quite an unusually beautiful shot. No. The sun. Yeah. That's definitely the sun we have to It's the same. It's the same. Jim saying goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah, the Teletubbies never actually want to go. Want to. Want to go, but they are. But they do understand eventually. Oh, this is supposed to represent the kids leaving. Leaving the. Like. The epi Leaving. Leaving the Teletubbies. And this is them. Yeah, leaving the episode. The kids leaving and moving on to the next show in, in broadcast audio. Oh, here's the credits. Tim Whitehall. I believe he, he he's also the same guy who did voices like Jubilee and Underground Ernie. Ten years after this. Trying to go to nursery school. Wardrobe, art directors, ah, oh, those people, script supervisors, assistant directors, oh, camera operators, vision engineers. Oh, dubbing mixer, you didn't do quite as good of a job as you could in the Oh, editors or computer animation, graphic design. Do... Why, why is it... Why is the very end of the Teletubbies ending song so... Um, to some people, the, the very end of the Teletubbies song, that those last few notes you heard, can can be somewhat tear-jerking, and I don't quite understand why. Were they try- were they somehow trying to make the kids upset that the show- that the show was- had ended for now? Yeah, do, Yeah, but to some kids- but to some people, the- the very end of the Teletubbies song- of the Teletubbies closing theme, to some people, it could be quite tear-jerking. Especially if you're a kid, but I don't quite understand why why they why the music composers um, made made it like that. Oh, I'm sure they have their their reasons for making it that way. Anyway, so that brings that's gonna bring this VHS review to a close. Um, um, fast forward, and just a minute, guys. I need to get something. And now. You guys shall hear the nostalgic sound of VHS rewinding. Hang on, I'm just getting something. Oh. Sorry, I just need to check my phone. For something. Here we go. Now it's going to sound a little different from normal. Oh, oh, oh actually, no. It, previously, because of how damaged this tape is, rewinding, um, rewinding can, um, re, yeah, because of how damaged this tape is, the rewound, the rewinding sound, it had to stop partway through rewinding before starting again, but it seems to be fine now, so maybe if I watch this tape again, if I decide to watch this tape again, maybe the maybe the picture quality will be fine. If I decide to watch it again. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, and just put this remote over here so I don't accidentally sit on it and change it away and accidentally turn on my cable TV. I'm not going to have cable TV when I live on my own. Come on out, please. Right, you seen that bit of tape there? I cannot allow for that, so we got to put it back in. 
Rewind. Uh, rewind. Excuse me. Oh god, it's starting again. Hang on, where's the pause button? Ah, god. Yeah, sometimes my remote can go a bit wrong. When you, and when that happens, you have to take the batteries out, swap them over, and put them back in. Ah, I'm so sorry about this, guys. Just bear with me. Oh, it's kind of hard to do this one holding a camera at the same time. See if this rewinds now. And let's and one more should do the trick. Ah. Don't be difficult, please, VHS player. Right, and that should do it. Here we are, and just check, um, yeah, that accepts my standards, and now, ah, close this back up, and that concludes this review. So... Is this VHS worth adding to your collection? Well, if you're a massive if you're a massive fan of Teletubbies, then yes, I'd say it definitely is worth adding to your collection. But if you're not really a fan of Teletubbies or BBC shows in general, or kid or BBC kids shows in general, then don't bother with this with adding this to your collection. But if you're a Teletubbies fan, then yes, absolutely add this to your collection. But if not, then don't bother. Or you can anyway, if you're not a even if you're not a Teletubbies fan. Who am I to try and stop you? What I say about these reviews, um, what I say about these VHSs, um, that these are just recommendations. I'm not asking you to add this or not add this to your collection. But yeah, so yeah, this is worth adding to your collection. But really only if you're a massive Teletubbies fan. Yeah, Teletubbies, for its target audience, is actually a very well-made show with a very high production value, great music, great voice acting. And overall, it's just a show that I feel doesn't quite deserve the, the, some of the hate it gets. And I'm sure a lot of you watching will agree with that. But, um... Regardless, yeah, I do really like this show, but I do understand. But if you don't like this show, then that is understandable, I guess. But you, but but as I said, you still have to really appreciate the production value of this show. Yeah, yeah, the production value has still got to be appreciated. But then again, I understand if you, if some of you watching don't like this show, I completely understand. So, that about concludes this VHS review, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to me, Train Lover 16 if you haven't already. And I will see you all... Wait a minute. What is this? What is this in front of me now? Guys, it is almost time. Three weeks from now, I shall be doing my most anticipated VHS review of this year, and the one that, that I and many of you guys are most looking forward to seeing. Join me in exactly three weeks today as I do a VHS review of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. I guarantee that it's a VHS review you guys do not want to miss. But until then, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye everyone! Mm -hmm.